When you're using a database with your enterprise application, you want to be able to do schema migrations also without having a downtime for your users. For relational databases, this means that you would do something like database refactorings with scripts that enable to make changes while two versions of your applications are both being supported at the same time, also called N-1 compatibility. If you have a database such as Neo4j, which does not enforce a schema, or to be more precise, it is schema on read rather than schema on write, and then it's basically uh, the application's responsibility to make sure that everything works, it still makes sense to refactor your graph schema in order to uh, keep these changes in sync and in order to enable refactorings uh, on your code side. I want to show you in this video how to do uh, migrations with applications that connect to a Neo4j instance and that are running in a Kubernetes environment. What I will use, I will use uh, init containers with um, this tool that allows migrations with Neo4j um, created by this awesome person. And it allows you to do changes that are either defined in Java code or in Cypher scripts. The latter is what I will use. I use this in a command line mode, actually in init container, so it will run in a Docker container. I have this Quarkus playground application that I showed earlier with the coffee example that I now also will use. So basically we have already something deployed to a Kubernetes cluster that runs uh, in a managed cluster environment. For uh, me, I use the IKS, the IBM Cloud Managed Kubernetes Service. So I already have a coffee shop application, my application that connects to a um, Neo4j graph database. And I can connect to this, um, for example, via um, a local um, Cypher shell. If I collect to um, a port that I uh, forwarded to my local host and then just say, okay, for example, let's see what's in the graph for now. Uh, please match all nodes and see, well, that this is the example I created earlier. Now, if I have some change, let's say I want to rename a field while enabling my application to, well, have zero downtime to basically use multiple versions of that uh, application at the same time, then I need to do something like adding a temporary field first that is nullable and then gradually changing this field, which means I have to do multiple deployments. I want to show you how to do this um, in uh, this example. So what I did, I already have a few uh, commits here in this uh, history. So this is now the baseline version that just deploys my application like I showed you previously. And now I will just uh, check out another commit that already includes, well, what I want to show you here, which is an init container. So what this means, this Docker image will run just before my application will run and it has to run successfully uh, in order for my application to be deployed and it will connect um, to my graph uh, database and use basically the same configuration to then apply the changes. And for the changes are defined in this Docker file. So this is actually what runs then in my init container. And this has Java being installed. I use here default uh, OpenJDK, but with the flavor of OpenJ9. And this will run this tool in this mode here, Neo4j migrations, and it will just apply everything that's in the Cypher's um, directory. And in this directory, I have now uh, the schema um, available. So that is the, the base schema that I already applied. And how this works, this um, structure has to follow a certain name. So a V for version, and then uh, these digits followed by two underscores. And this version is actually gonna be stored in the graph later on. So what I do now is basically I apply my new YAML, this update that has still the same version of my application, but adds migration version two. And version two then in my case is a Docker uh, image that already includes this schema as well. So then I have both files in this directory and then it applies version one that will already be there and version two to say, okay, actually, please add a new field that is a name that equals the description. So, you know, copy these fields over there. And then um, I can do this here and say, okay, please actually apply uh, the deployment, including the changes here. And then my coffee shop deployment will be changed with now a new um, 
container within well init container. So I can say kube control logs from this container, but well one of the containers here, which is um, gonna be the schema migration. So that's the init container. And it says, okay, actually, uh, well, the first time we will apply um, this master data schema and version two. And now if I have a look into the graph, I will see that actually, uh, well, a few things change. So first of all, we have new, some new nodes that stores just the current version. So this is what has been applied and the um, uh, current version as well, yeah, version two. And also we have two more fields for our flavor available that is just well equals the description that is called name. So again, if you're familiar with how that works on a relational database, then this is very much the same approach to say, okay, don't migrate in jumps, migrate in small steps and gradually apply these steps. And as you can imagine, well, one of the next steps will be to change then the applications code. If we have only the, uh, the change with a name, um, with a field that is not written from some other code, then we can change it quicker. quicker. Otherwise, we would have to have multiple versions of our application that first of all, well, only writes um, uh, to the new, um, uh, to the old and then new uh, field and then uh, reads from the appropriate field so that we make sure that both versions are always uh, playing alongside with the uh, corresponding other version that everything works and we don't lose data. Now, uh, what I will do, um, we will have a look into well how this looks uh, in the next version where we already have some code changes uh, here. So now basically in the flavor class, we already changed um, this to the name. We changed the description uh, to the name here. So then it will uh, equal the new, um, uh, the new application here. And this will then be a new version of my application still with the same uh, database schema. So we can actually apply this now as a next step as well. And then it will again deploy a new application that now actually has some um, code changes, but it still works uh, since our uh, graph already has been updated before. So again, if we also write to that field, we would have some more uh, versions in place uh, correspondingly. Then what I can do, I have a local port forwarding, or actually I had one before, which now needs to be updated since this is a new part. And then I can um, actually try this out locally as well, like you saw in a previous uh, video where I say, okay, please now uh, give me the beans uh, in my application. While here it still works, I actually don't see a difference in this output, but I still, uh, but I see that it still works here. Actually, the graph didn't change. But now if I say, please apply now the last version to just um, apply all of the changes here to be then uh, finished uh, with um, all the changes, then we also will have a new um, migration script, which now says, okay, set this again. Now it really depends what you're doing here. Usually at the end, you would need to copy again all of the changes that have been done by the old application in the meantime, which for us here is not the case. Uh, so we could omit uh, this step as well, but then please remove the description. So now we fully made that change of renaming description to name. And then uh, we can apply this as well. If we run our YAML file, then this would um, still have the same application version, but a new database migration wor version in our case, and then say, okay, please deploy this as well. And then ultimately it will apply this script as well. We can have a look into the logs uh, here again. We can say, okay, please show me the schema migration logs and says now, okay, these two already have been applied. I don't do anything here, but the new version 03 will be applied. Let's have a look into uh, the graph database and see, okay, actually, yes, the version three is there. And now we see some changes here as well. So actually flavor the old field, these uh, disappeared. So that has been updated here as well. So again, Neo4j is um, a schema on a read. So it would not force us to say, okay, actually you need or you don't need this specific field in our case if we don't add some other constraints. Um, but it still makes sense to keep that somewhat in sync uh, with our application and to see, okay, what's going on. Uh, let me uh, one last time show you how this works in, uh, in our application so that actually now we can again uh, forward the new application and still uh, see that it still works also with this case. Again, with the output, we actually don't see any changes. We st just see that it still works uh, here uh, with the rest output. And um, that is how we apply these changes.
So in general, very similar to what we could do with a relational database, I use an init container as part of my application deployment to deploy um, something that then applies uh, schema migration changes. So this is very similar to relational databases and I can use uh, this tool with the Neo4j migrations uh, to do that. I also want to mention that there is uh, actually something cool available with this um, APOC a library um, that is available in, in Neo that where we can actually make some more sophisticated graph refactorings, including, uh, for example, renaming some nodes and relationships. But it depends whether you can actually use this while enabling zero downtime deployments because of that N-1 compatibility. This might actually do too much already where you say, okay, hold on a second, I actually need to copy them first into a new thing that then later on might be used from the old end or the new version until I actually gradually can remove and uh, fully apply, fully roll out the change in order to do the migration. So again, don't migrate in jumps, migrate in steps. And that is uh, very similar to actually how we would do relational database uh, migrations here with Neo4j and applications that run in Kubernetes setups. Thanks a lot for watching.